The eight funniest court cases of all time. Every once in a while, we like to compose something that will make you laugh and take a moment to grin. Because of this, we are taking a break from pricing and legal project management this week. On the contrary, in this section, we will go over eight of the most hilarious court cases that have ever been heard. To avoid checking your email for half an hour, you should get yourself a biscuit and a beautiful cup of tea. Number eight, favorite pants. Judge Leonardo DiCaprio recounts the time a woman appealed against a parking penalty she had received for parking in a zone that had been identified as a loading zone. The woman had been parking in the area where the dumpster was located. Furthermore, the woman stated that she normally parked legally in a location that was near to the one that was being referred to in the placard. With that in mind, the judge inquired, so why not park legally this time? Because there was a dumpster parked within that area. Therefore, I occupied the space that the dumpster ought to have occupied. It was necessary for her to, hum. Additionally, she was required to pay the parking ticket that she had received. The following are some wise suggestions for avoiding getting a parking ticket. Number seven, the old excuse of wearing stiff shoes. Additional legal humor comes from Frank Caprio, who serves as the chief municipal judge in Providence, Rhode Island, and is now the star of the television show Caught in Providence. Caprio, judging by the stories he recently shared with Reader's Digest, has heard everything there is to hear in the legal world. For instance, a man who was accused of speeding admitted to Judge Caprio that he was unaware that he was speeding because he was wearing a pair of shoes that were so stiff that he couldn't feel how hard he was pressing on the gas pedal. You may be held in contempt if you do not laugh at these jokes about lawyers. Number 6. Favorite Pants An administrative law judge named Roy Pearson decided to take action and file a lawsuit for $67 million in 2007. This decision was made in 2007 when Custom Cleaners, a local dry cleaner, returned what Judge Pearson believed to be the incorrect pair of pants that had been sent back. According to him, the pants that he had brought to the dry cleaner to be altered had been misplaced, and the dry cleaner had failed to live up to the promise, made in the satisfaction guaranteed sign that was displayed in the window of the dry cleaner's establishment. According to Pearson, the $67 million, which was subsequently reduced to $53 million, was equivalent to claims for failure to comply with common law fraud regulations as a result of Pearson's inability to provide evidence that the pants he picked up were not his. The pants case was ultimately lost by Pearson. Number 5. To play golf or not to play golf. What exactly is the question? Or, to put it another way, it was. Within the context of this particular case, the court was tasked with determining whether or not walking was an essential component of the sport of golf. The disease that Casey Martin, a professional golfer, was born with prohibited him from walking for extended periods when he was growing up. He was disappointed to learn that the Professional Golfers Association, PGA, did not grant his request to participate in a competition that required him to use a buggy rather than walk. They stated that it would provide Martin with an advantage, and they also mentioned that walking was an essential component of the game of golf. Enter Justice Antonin Scalia who will provide a scathing evaluation of the discriminating tactics of the Professional Golfers Association (PGA). It hurts. We, the justices, are obligated to face what is, without a doubt, an enormous duty. The U.S. Supreme Court has been given the important responsibility of determining what constitutes golf, and it has been given this responsibility. I am sure that the framers of the Constitution fully expected that sooner or later the paths of golf and government the law and the links would once again cross, and that the judges of this August court would someday have to wrestle with that age-old jurisprudential question, for which their years of study in the law have so well prepared them. Is someone riding around a golf course from shot to shot a golfer? Mr. Antonin Scalia, the justice. Number four, there was a young man from Nantucket who was looking for it. When it comes to this particular case, the format of the ruling itself takes precedence over the specifics of the dispute. More specifically, the fact that the judge composed his verdict in the style of a limerick. Because the first two lines do not rhyme, it is obvious that the judge could use some improvement in his techniques. Perhaps you should continue working during the day. A group of Gaines farmers had a strategy in mind. It amounts to a significant amount of fraud. The payments for cotton, however, started to smell like rotting eggs. That poor Uncle Sam was the victim of a mugging. It is Justice Goldberg. Number three, may I beg your forgiveness? 
The next item on our list is also selected, but this time it is more for the structure than the case that is being argued. When it came to this particular case, a judge from India's High Court issued a ruling that was so complicated that it was overturned by the Supreme Court. Since we are being completely honest, we have been pondering the significance of the following passage for close to an hour. Would anyone be willing to put some light on this matter? As a result of the aforementioned discussion, the ensuing sequel is of the learned executing court while it is pronouncing its impugned rendition, overlooking the relevant and germane evidence, and not appreciating its worth. This is the summum bonum of the aforementioned discussion. All of the aforementioned material that existed before the learned executing court was slighted, and their impact was undermined in an unsustainable manner by him. As a consequence of this, the order that is being challenged is characterized by a perversity and a grotesque absurdity of misappreciation of the information that is on record. Through the BBC. Number 2. An innuendo made a court. It is possible that the life of a judge could grow monotonous at some point. As each side attempts to make their case, listening to defendant after defendant and lawyer after lawyer as they each present their case. Thankfully, some judges enjoy using their decisions as a way to inject some excitement into the proceedings. Perhaps only for those who are paying attention. The case of Grill v. San Antonio is a good example. The state of San Antonio was attempting to restrict exotic dancers from wearing anything other than a bikini top based on the information included in the document. As a result of the club's attempt to obtain an injunction that would prevent the cities from executing this law, the ruling was a heaven of double and tender. To our great regret, the plaintiffs were not successful. The following are some of the most notable aspects of the verdict. If the parties decide to take this case to trial on the merits, the court urges them to engage in appropriate discovery intercourse as they traverse the highs and lows of the litigation process to possibly reach a happy conclusion. Also, for the second time, the court has been given the responsibility of drafting an ordinance that addresses semi-naked dancers. San Antonio opposes grill. Number 1. It was never even brought before the court. The name of our final entry gives the impression that it was not even submitted to the court. A disagreement that was supposed to be tried in court was instead resolved outside of court. In response, Justice Martin Sheehan of Kentucky penned a cancellation order that was so full of joy that it is deserving of a spot. Judge Sheehan noted that the news made him happier than a tick on a fat dog because the court is otherwise busier than a one-legged cat in a sandbox and, quite frankly, would have rather jumped naked off a 12-foot stepladder into a five-gallon bucket of porcupines than have presided over a trial of the hearing dispute, a trial which, no doubt, would have made the jury more confused than a hungry baby in a topless bar and made the parties and their attorneys madder than mosquitoes in a mannequin factory. From the list first. Did you like it? Tell us what you think of the video in the comments section below. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more interesting videos.